Now, also this week, Nintendo announced that they are rolling back their draconian policies in regards to independent content creators using Nintendo footage and products in their videos. Uh, I think they've been running a foul of fair use, in my opinion, but most of us independent content creators don't have the legal resources to sue Nintendo to prove that we had a fair use or even argue it. Uh, so in many cases, people just saw their revenue being taken away by this big corporation. Uh, Nintendo did create something called the Creators Program, where if you followed a specific set of guidelines, you could get some of that revenue back from Nintendo directly. Uh, now that is all going away, thankfully and they have put up some guidelines here that largely mirror what a fair use would be. Uh, so you can see here they will now allow you to do a Let's Play video and video game reviews, but you have to put some commentary and some value of your own uh, into the video. They don't want you just uploading uh, a playthrough of a game without any real commentary or creative uh, input here. So that makes sense to me. That's typically what would be considered fair use. But they are limiting the platforms where they're going to allow this to happen on. So right now you don't see uh, Amazon on this list at all, do you? But you do see YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, and a few of the other major ones that most people are currently posting to. But this might be an issue if you're posting to Amazon. Technically, you're outside of the scope of this uh, new agreement that they're putting together. Uh, they also had something interesting here under question nine about corporate entities. Uh, they're saying that these guidelines are only applicable to individual consumers. So I don't know what that means if you're an LLC like I am. That's kind of a weird thing there that they would put that in place. And I also wonder what this means for journalistic entities. Technically, they could go after GameSpot or IGN. It's still this pick and choose thing that they're doing about which companies can review their games versus not. I don't know how much they're going to go into enforcing this and determining who's an individual versus a corporation, but that one uh, really stuck out for me. Uh, there will be cases still where they'll remove things from sharing platforms if they find it inappropriate, and they can define what that means. And that was one of their main concerns initially when they started going after content more aggressively is they felt like people were using words and language that uh, did not fit the brand very well, and that was one of the criteria that you had to meet uh, to get into their creator program in the first place. They didn't want people swearing and doing inappropriate comments. It uh, looks like that is still kind of here. So if they find something they don't like, they might still come after you. Now, if you're a content creator who's focused on emulation, you might want to look at question 11 on their FAQ, uh, where they define what is unlawful, infringing, or inappropriate. Uh, they got the usual stuff here that you're, you know, your content isn't violating any applicable laws. It's not infringing intellectual property rights. But they also added a third bullet here about featuring pirated Nintendo software. So for example, if you're showing uh, some Wii U game running in 4K, that might be enough for Nintendo to say, yep, pirated content, not off the original disc, you're out of here. So just bear that in mind. They might uh, look at that still, even though they've got this new approach to things. I'm sure this is also going to apply, of course, to what we saw uh, this past week with the soundtrack for Super Smash Brothers leaking out. Uh, Nintendo took down a bunch of channels for that, uh, clearly within their rights to do it, but just keep in mind, Bullet 3 might also impact emulator creators too. This channel is brought to you by the LON.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.